it's Scott Manley here with another Kerbal Space Program demonstration. After the Soyuz MS-10 failure, there was a lot of confusion about ballistic re-entries. How were ballistic re-entries any different from, well, just falling? Well, despite their superficial resemblance to things like rocks, space capsules with a flat bottom do actually get aerodynamic lift. And you can actually see this in stock Kerbal Space Program. Here, I am falling down, and you can see that I'm using the onboard reaction control wheels to try and adjust my sideways velocity. I'm just trying to move it back towards the runway. I initially moved it away to show that we had it. And yeah, what happens is because the thing has a flat bottom, the wind or the air hitting it at that angle will push it in that direction. Now, the thing about real spacecraft is that they don't have these amazingly powerful reaction wheels that they do in Kerbal Space Program. So it's not something that can be done in real life the way that I'm doing this right now. So if I want to make this work the way it does in real life, I'm going to go into the game and modify the parts to make them, uh, well, more realistic. Now obviously there are mods that do this, but I want to show you how this works. I'm going into the parts menu and I'm looking for the Mark III pod and I'm going to edit it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an entry called COM offset. That's the center of mass offset. In real spacecraft that fly like this, the center of mass is deliberately not exactly at the center. And this means that when it's falling down under the force of gravity, the aerodynamic forces will actually force the spacecraft to a slight angle. Now, I'm just trying to set it up here, get it stable. But there, look, you see it's about 25 degrees offset in this case. Now, what I'm going to do now is just maintain this. What, what I've got here is that my positioning vector is slightly higher than my velocity vector. So in this location, I'm actually generating aerodynamic lift. And in this case, I've got Kerbal Engineer installed. You can see that in the window at the right. And about halfway down, there's a value showing G-force. There's two values. There's a current one and there's a maximum one. And if, when I'm using the aerodynamic lift, it is lifting me up and stopping me falling down into the denser parts of the atmosphere. And by using that, I've kept the g-force to just about 2.1 g. The rate of deceleration of the spacecraft is a function of the speed and how dense the atmosphere is. So if I can keep this spacecraft up higher, longer, I can reduce the g-forces. So now what I do is I rotate the spacecraft in the opposite direction. Now you should realize that I'm just using my roll here on a real spacecraft. You would have roll control, but you would not have enough thrust in the pitch control to be able to maintain this angle. You just have to rely on the natural stability of the denser, uh, of the aerodynamics. So yeah, look at this one. We've already gone past G-force of two. We're up to three Gs. We're going to max out at just over 4 Gs. And what? because all we've done is we flipped this thing around and it pushed us down deeper into the atmosphere faster. So we were going at a higher speed when we hit the denser parts of the atmosphere and therefore showed a much higher G-force. It becomes much easier to see this effect if you put the two videos side by side. But because one is pushing the spacecraft down and because it's falling faster, it takes a lot less time to get down to the surface. The one on the left is carefully gliding through the atmosphere, trying to keep as much lift as possible, trying to stay as high as possible. The one on the right is already 10 kilometers below because it has been using its aerodynamic properties to push itself down into the thickest parts of the atmosphere. It experiences the higher G loads, and before the spacecraft on the left has even reached maximum g-force, the spacecraft on the right is ready to open its parachute, assuming its crew is still conscious after those high g's. This technique has been used for a really long time. This is a extract from a video regarding the Apollo program. The entire re-entry was actively flown by the flight computer. It could adjust its altitude. and In this design here, they actually talked about doing a skip outwards and then falling back in. The idea was to have two moments of heating so they could re reduce the overall heating. Uh, this didn't end up getting used, but they did actively fly a flight corridor. And not only did they control the altitude, but they could actually 
turn their spacecraft left and right, and therefore they would be able to control where they ended up landing the spacecraft so they could minimize the area that had to be searched by the recovery forces. Now say there's a computer failure. In that case, you don't ne necessarily know which way is up, which way is down, which way will maximize or minimize your heating. So the spacecraft can do a ballistic re-entry and what it does is it just rolls and that averages out the velocity for the, in the lift and it will essentially follow something very similar to ballistic trajectory. And if you look at this example, which again has exactly the same starting conditions, we max out the g-force at about 3 g's, which is roughly halfway between our minimum and our maximum, corresponding to the two extrema of the aerodynamic lift configurations. Now consider what happens during a launch failure where you are suborbital, you're not able to set a very gradual descent. Instead, you're falling down steeper, more steeply through the atmosphere. Remember what I said, that the deceleration you experience is a function of your speed and how dense the atmosphere is. Well, if you are in a suborbital trajectory, you may not be going at orbital speeds, but because you don't have that speed and you don't have the very gentle descent, you may actually fall down through the atmosphere much faster and therefore you get to the thicker parts of the atmosphere more quickly. So in this case, we did a rolling re-entry because we would assume the computer may not be able to configure itself for every abort scenario. And yeah, it came out to have a maximum g-force of about 4.1, which is equivalent to the worst case aerodynamic re-entry, but from an initial velocity, which was 70% of our orbital velocity. So you can see that during an abort scenario where you have not got into orbit, you are falling very quickly down into the thicker parts of the atmosphere. You can actually experience much higher g-loading than you would from a re-entry from orbital velocities. And that is what we've been talking about in terms of ballistic versus aerodynamic re-entries. I hope this makes a bit more sense. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.